So the first thing we're going to start with is kind of where we start all our grade 9 classes. It doesn't matter what level of grade 9, every single grade 9 math student on the first day of each semester in our classrooms does uh, mindsets. Uh, we've learned a lot over time, and, and you've probably seen some of the research from Carol Dweck um, out of Stanford, and there's a lot of research that shows that if you have a positive growth mindset and you foster that positive classroom environment where everyone feels they are capable of stretching their own thinking and growing over time, um, that results skyrocket. It's been proven time and time again. So we really work hard at that, and we start on the very first day. The only thing we do on the first day of math, actually, in grade 9, is mindsets. So we start off with, um, with an activity, and we've actually dropped the cards off in the plain envelopes at the table. So there's uh, two envelopes at each table, and inside would be the cards. So the cards actually that our grade 9 students are going to get next Tuesday um, when they come into class. And when you look at those cards, there's a, a number of different statements. Some of them represent a growth mindset, some of them represent more of a fixed mindset. And what we have the students do is we have our big two foot by three foot whiteboards. Um, our, our students are always in teams, and we drop one of these big boards off at each of the tables, and they create an agree and a disagree. And we let them sort of fight it out as tables and say, okay, what do you agree with here? What statements do you disagree with here? And start to place them on your group spectrum. So uh, they kind of come to a consensus. They either agree or they disagree. And then sometimes we'll let them argue a little bit, and then they'll call me over and say, well, we can't agree on this. And I'll say, that's no problem. If you can't agree, just put it in the middle. Right? Your, your team couldn't come to a consensus, so just throw it on that little line there, and that's no problem. We let them look through the statements, like I said, talk about them. Uh, each student kind of brings their own perspective, their own experiences. Um, and then we go around the classroom, and I actually go from table group to table group, and I'll pull each one up, and I've got the dynamic ones. And I'll read the statements one at a time, and I'll say, okay, you can actually get more intelligent over time. Over here, did we agree with this statement or disagree? Well, we agreed. What did we do? We agreed. We agreed. We actually disagree and we agreed. Okay, well, it sounds as though as a class, we pretty much agree with the statements. So we're going to put this over here. The next statement I grab, hard work is how you become successful. Agrees around the wall paper. We're going to put this one over here. I like to hear about other people's successes because this inspires me. Mostly agree, but a couple disagree in some kind of not sure, not a full consensus. Okay, we'll slide that guy in the middle for now. Maybe we'll come back and talk with that one afterwards. The really nice thing about this is that you go around the class and have conversations with students in the different groups. You start to already um, get a bit of a perspective on what, on what they're coming in with and where they're coming from. Once you do this class spectrum, you get a really good idea of how much your students are in a growth mindset or more of a fixed mindset, and maybe specific types of things you have to work on. One that always sticks in my head is the idea, this one right here, when someone criticizes me, it means they think I can do better. And there's another one, when someone criticizes me, they think I'm not, it means they think I'm not good enough. These are interesting ones because students still, I find a number of students still think that when someone criticizes their work, it means that you think they're not good enough. And that's one that's often um, sort of in this middle section here and one that I always have to work on. So what we do is it doesn't end on that first day, this is something that we foster throughout the rest of the semester. We work really hard at celebrating mistakes. In our session this morning, we talked quickly about my favorite no, and we'll have students do a question, and then we'll bring some up, and we'll take a look. We'll take an incorrect answer, throw it under the document camera, and say, look at this great map, look at all the awesome things that are going on. Now tell me what you think happened in line three. Oh, well, they should have, they did this, and they should have done that. Yeah. I agree with you, yeah, but it looks like that happened there, right? How many other people did that? Because I saw the other answer, and people with their hands up, yeah. Well, this is great. Thank you so much, uh, Lisa. We wouldn't have learned this without you. Thank you for your answer. That's awesome. You really helped us out today. And so you actually celebrate students' mistakes.